What if you could get a video client to pay you over $150,000? That would be absolutely crazy, right? Yet, this is exactly what my student, Mike Scott, was able to achieve. And in today's video, he's sharing his success story with you. So let's get into it. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time, Mike. I'm super excited for this success interview and your story. Um, uh, but to get this started, what's your name? Where are you from? And how long have you been making videos? Yeah, Nick. So uh, my name is Mike Scott. I am uh, a resident of Los Angeles, but I'm from Memphis, Tennessee originally. I've been in Los Angeles for a little over seven years. And um, I I started making videos in 2018. Um, I have a background in uh, not just uh, music, but also like mass communication in general. I went to college for uh, the recording industry, however, my minor in college, uh, electronic media, uh, electronic media management. And so essentially, you know, during that time, I learned how to write ads, I learned how to, um, like the ins and outs of different, like broadcast media, um, operations. So everything from radio to TV. And then just like color theory, a bunch of different things that I didn't really think I would be using in my professional day to day. But it is <laughs> that skill set that I learned in college actually kind of paved the way for me to jump back into video production. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know anything about video production at all in 2018. I just knew I wanted it uh, for my life because where, where I was at that time, I just was very unhappy. And I just said, you know what, like me and my uh, my girlfriend, who's actually my business partner, we decided to purchase some camera equipment and figure it out. And uh, what is this, 2023? Yeah, nearly five years later, this is where we are. Nice. That's, that's good to hear. Uh, what, what a journey, especially because of one crazy big thing that happened. Uh, like when was it? A couple months ago. Where you closed mm -hmm. what one hundred and fifty nine thousand dollar deal or what was it? Yeah, to 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 be specific, it was one hundred and fifty nine thousand three hundred and sixty one dollars. Nice, that number is going to be stuck in your head forever, man. <laughs> yeah, forever. <laughs> so, uh, absolutely. So, so let's let's dive into that. Let's dive into that. This is an insane number for most videographers. If you think about it, mm -hmm. the top ten percent of all U.S. videographers make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Now you come in, you join the VBA. You apply the stuff, you get a one hundred fifty nine thousand dollar deal, and this is absolutely crazy to to many people. How had like how did that happen? Like how did you get the deal, and how did, did you manage to land that for one hundred fifty nine thousand? Uh, let's start from why I even decided to enroll in the right? All right, let's do it. So, um, prior to that, I the the largest project that I had ever produced was. A little, it was like seventy five hundred dollars. Um, I had two projects that were right around that, that price range. And, and at that time, and, uh, at that time, you were still at like two twenty five hundred dollars a month in in revenue, correct? Correct, correct. Like that was on average, right? Um, so those were like the two biggest projects that I had ever done, and I um, I just kind of hit a a wall where like obviously I knew that I was talented because I learned really fast. I had a mentor that was already in the film industry and kind of like showed me specific things, but like my confidence just wasn't there. Um I had to really refine it. And um one of the reasons I realized is that one of the reasons I realized my confidence wasn't there was because I didn't have a comprehensive education around the sales process. Like when it comes to like sequencing, storytelling, all of that, I'm your guy, right? Uh, but when it comes to like being able to convey and 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 being able to sell my skill set, I've always kind of like struggled with that since I've transitioned over into this side, right? Um, I, I, I can like my first four years in business to almost being like in college because I didn't know anything. And so I had to learn in depth, like the creative side. And so because of that, the sales side of it kind of took the back seat, 
right? Because like I was just trying to get more and more projects in my portfolio. And that kind of, that ended up leaving me, it kind of like stuck, stuck it in the position of 2,500. Some, some months I would do like 3,500, 4,000, but I just wasn't getting where I knew I could be. Like, hmm. and part of that also was um, I needed exposure to the film industry to be able to understand all the different moving parts that go into filmmaking on the commercial side and on, you know, branded content, all of those different things. I needed to be able to understand the, the inner workings of it. And so um, once I transitioned over, because I, I, I went from the trucking and logistics industry and moved over into film and entertainment. Those two things are a very wide gap, right? Uh, between those industries. And being on set allowed me to see how things were run. Like a lot of people operate in things day to day. I'm one of those people that looks at, even though I'm in it, I I look at things from a top down perspective. I always analyze, it's like putting a puzzle together. Like how, how do all of these pieces fit together? And that was very um, instrumental in building my confidence in this industry. But that that sales component was still missing, right? I needed to be able to package this in a very specific way, understand what my offer was, and be able to convey it very simply um, to a prospect and how I could essentially add value and help them uh, reach their specific goals. Um, so that's kind of where we arrived at this. Now, I'm also a big, uh, big relationship builder, right? All of the deals that I've ever really gotten have been relationship based. And mm -hmm. that's not necessarily the greatest thing. However, it it's a, a very valuable trait to have. 100%. Because nothing is ever 100% transactional with me. And people feel that. That's why they feel they that's why they feel comfortable enough to, you know, hand over a budget to me. Right. Makes sense. Um, but I ended up using that skill set, meeting this specific this specific organization and just being I, I had already understood what their problem was. I already understood what their purpose was because I was already in tune with what they had going on. I didn't know that I would even be meeting them on this particular day. And I just walked up, introduced myself, and like we just struck up conversation. We exchanged information. And then that process from meeting them to closing the deal took about a month and a half, right? Of just organic relationship building. And I'm glad that I did that because <laughs> I mean that project could have been, let's say if you know, they said, well, you know, it's only we only got ten thousand dollars, but it's like, you know. I probably would have stopped at that had I not known the specific things to do in the program in terms of trying and asking very specific questions, getting to the root cause of the issue. Even though I understood what they do and what they what they were trying to accomplish, but getting to the root of it from an executive mindset and getting and what their intended goal is like i would have never known how to do that had i not been in the bba program but wait a second so they told you they have a ten thousand dollar budget no 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 no. i'm saying like if, if i i was using that as an example Got right it. okay i was just so about like, to say like wow <laughs> yeah like i would have just been like oh okay this is you know versus asking and prying those questions Got it. in a way that i didn't know to do before got it right Got it. Okay. Do do you know what their initial budget was? Um. So, I know that their budget for the next, I would say, the next thirteen months at this point. I know specifically what the budget is that they have to use, which is mm -hmm. five million dollars. Yep. They have to claim this money from the state, and I I didn't preface this, um, in this interview, but this is. Uh, a local government agency here in Los Angeles. And so they have access to resources that, you know, is unfathomable, you know, in yeah. most videographers' mindsets, right? But like, I don't look at myself as a videographer. I look at myself as a producer, right? Because I can pay a videographer 
or I can pay a cinematographer to do things that they may be even more you, you own than you own the project. That's what's, what's exactly, happening. exactly. Okay, so this uh, this agency then decided to work with you, 159k. What does that deal entail? Like, what are the deliverables for that? So the deliverables in total, um, it was, I believe. Uh, I have to go back and look at it, but it's like right around like 40, 42, something like that. Um, uh, videos? Now that's, yeah, that's a high number, but I did it a very specific way, right? Okay. So the entire thing is actually 14 videos, but it's just in different formats that they can use across. Got it. Different. Got it. So and there's, then and there's, it, it's There's still, also a translation component too. So like, got it. I think in total it's like 20, 20 I think it was like 24 videos. And then got you it. multiply that by two because they have Spanish versions that they want to put out. Okay. So it's not really 48 videos. It's just like uh, translated versions. So that puts you at like, I don't know, around 8K-ish per video. Some, some around that. Uh, I honestly I haven't even done the math on it, but <laughs> <laughs> but that's but that's what it what it puts yeah like around eight k, which is still a phenomenal mm -hmm. number, especially when you close it in a deal of this size. This is this is freaking amazing. So congratulations for that. Um, good I work. Appreciate it. So you learned in VBA how to ask these questions. You learned how to um, guide the lead and and close the deal for a premium price. How else has the VBA impacted you, like you as a person? I don't know, maybe mindset wise. I mean, we have 10 mindset live calls a week. We have all the mindset stuff in the in the program. Has was there any impact um from that as well? Absolutely. I mean, mindset is key, right? Everything starts in the mind. And so um, you know, the thing that I really love about the mindset calls is that. Jay allows you to unpack things in a way that, because he has a psychology background, right? Yeah, yeah, he's a. I think yeah. he's a master in in psychology. So, you know, you communicate whatever your blockages are, right? Whatever your challenges are, and he helps you re. Uh, what do they call, what do they call it? Like re-engineer, like reconstruct how you got to this point and then also how to overcome this specific thing that you're dealing with. Right. And you can do that in your everyday life. Like I do that in my relationship. I do that in my friendships. I do it in, um, just like my overall, like I'm, I'm taking my, my fitness very personal this year. Right. And like, I, I was having a conversation the other day and I was like, look, I can't, I can't just like wait right until the conditions are right. Like I, I have to go through the challenge of getting to where I need to be because it's already uncomfortable enough carrying as much weight as I do right now on my yeah. frame. So I'm like, I have to just overcome it and just do it. Right. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't have been able to have even that mindset just in, in terms of personal accountability had I not watched, you know, the first week of videos, had I not participated in these calls, you know, had I not like really just taken charge of where I am personally. And then also active listening is a serious component of this, right? This program teaches you active listening in a way like that. I don't even know if they really like if you guys really like cover active listening as like a specific video, but you have to be very in tune yes. with what a client is or, or a prospect is saying to you. Right. Because there's a process called mirroring. Right. And the top negotiators use this um, in closing sales deals. They use it in, I mean, <laughs> life or death situations. But being able to mirror somebody means that you, number one, heard them, which is important to them. Number two, it also lets them know that what you say, what they said to you is um, is resonating with you in some way. And then number three, it allows them to understand that, oh, they they get me. They get my problem. Mm -hmm. And so 
um, this program really helped me double down on my active listening skills in a way that I really didn't have them before. Understood. Which then allows you to close better deals and bigger deals because the client feels understood. The client feels like you are re- like you really care about them and you do care about them, uh, which uh-huh. then obviously translates into trust. And because of the trust, you get bigger deals. Right. That's, that's sick. It's good to hear. So let's assume somebody's watching this, right? They're a videographer, cinematographer, producer. They're like, well, this sounds way too good to be true. It's like, there's this Mike guy. He was doing $2,500 <laughs> a month. Now he closes a $159,000 deal. It's absolutely insane. So they're skeptic, they're skeptics, right? Um, what would you tell such a person when they say, well, this is, sounds way too good to be true. This can't be real. Mike must be a paid actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, I'll tell people right off the bat, I'm not a paid actor for the simple fact that I work on the labor side of Hollywood, right? Like, I, I don't do anything camera on camera, right? My job is to coach people in front of the camera. Uh, but the biggest thing is, I'm a person, even before I was doing this, I thought everything was a scam. I would not invest in personal development because I just thought everybody was like, just out for your money, right? Um, So I 100% get being being a skeptic. Um, But I'll just say this. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And one of the things that stood out to me about this program when I first saw it was, like, a lot of programs that I've seen in the past, whether it's, it's been personal development or like sales and marketing type of classes um, or courses, online courses, a lot of it was not geared specifically toward video production, Mm. right? Because Mm -hmm. this is a very, even though it's like a service-based business, right? It's a very specific thing, right? You know, and, and, you know, this this isn't about teaching you how to be a better better filmmaker. This is teaching you how to be a or run a business, which is completely different, right? 100%. Like I can teach you as a filmmaker, I can show you how to you know adjust your white balance, how to what what lens to use for the right situation, like what shot, like how to create a shot list. I can show you all of that, right? What this program though does, and instead of doing all of that, they don't they don't tell you how to be a better filmmaker. They teach you how to be a better CEO. They teach you how to be a better producer. So you also have to ultimately weigh like, are you really tired of the situation that you're in? Right. I know for me, I was 100 percent tired, bro. Like mm-hmm. I was like, I have one of what is referred to as one of the most coveted labor positions in Hollywood, right? I have 100% great health care. Like, even for people that are in America, you understand, you know, U.S. Congress and U.S. Senate, right? My health care is just below theirs. I pay $5 to go to the doctor. So, you know, for me... I'm already set when it comes to, I was already making like $10,000 a month just going to work. Does that make sense? Mm. You know, but what I needed more than that was like, I I work in a lot of toxic work environments too. You know, this is Hollywood, baby. That's just what it is. You know, (laughs) But one thing that I, I just wasn't willing to compromise was myself. Like I'm very ambitious and People can be off put by that in this industry, right? Because they want you to know your place. They want you to know your role, stuff like that. It doesn't matter if you're just trying to help aid things along, but there's a lot of things that I don't like dealing with on a day-to-day basis. Mm -hmm. And so I want more freedom. I want more time to myself. I want more time to grow my business and I want to be independent rather than dependent on um, my particular position, right? So this, what, what I really wanted to do was be a producer. 
from the from the gate when I first came into this thing. This program is literally allowing me to do that. And full transparency, I have enough money to cover my bills for the remainder of the year. That's sick. So rent, groceries, utilities. Um, if I want to make equipment upgrades, I can do all of that right now. I can pay everything up. So I don't have anything in terms of like, um, in the, there, this is, I'm not being paid, number one. You know, I'm actually paying y'all, you know, continuing on with, you know, VBA program. So like, there's no incentive in terms of that. It's just more so like, you got to really weigh it, bro. Is it worth it? Yes, it is. In, in my case, in that, I, another transparent moment, I'm not even 100% doing everything I'm supposed to do every day. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> I'm not even doing everything I'm supposed to do every day. Bro. I can show you the messages that Josh would send me, that Jay would send. They would be on my ass, bro. And I'd be like, look, y'all see where I'm at every day. It's not like I'm able to do this stuff. But guess what? I can actually do everything in the program because I have the time. You know, <laughs> so imagine if I have the time to 100 percent complete the program and go to the next level in my business. Right. I said before I got into this thing, I wanted to make one hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars a month because of the house that I want in Manhattan Beach. I think I'm on the way. Oh, yeah. You I think are. I'm on. The way. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> I, I've seen I, I was just going through the through your WhatsApp chat before we hopped on on this call and I saw that you're now like really visualizing everything like making like writing all your goals down having it on vision boards around your office and stuff so how is that changing how's that changing your business for you or your life even oh man it's it, it so it's it's beautiful from the simple fact that I have a partner that is 100% invested in our success as well, right? Mm. But then number two, it's it helps me unpack everything that's up here, right? There's a lot of noise up here, right? But being able to see everything, write everything out, and then there's a saying that says, uh, write the vision, make it plain, yeah. right? Being able to do that, it allows us to have a reference to pull from versus her having to ask me a million questions every single day. She already understands what the vision is, right? We know how to move forward and we know how to reverse engineer to get to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. I mean, it's, it's instrumental, bro. Nice. I can't really explain it any better than that. Nice, smart. Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing that you do it. I mean, there's a reason why we teach it in the Video Business Academy, right? There's a reason why we tell people, hey, create your vision board, make sure you know what you're working for. Because most people say, I want to make 10K a month, but it's a totally, completely meaningless number. And that's why they never get there. It's like, why mm -hmm. would I get to 10K a month if I don't even know what to do with the money? Right. So that's why, why I really love to see you doing that and love to see you implementing the things that you're that you're learning. It's amazing. It's beautiful to see. That's why also I'm saying you're getting closer. You are on that journey to getting that house in Manhattan Beach, because uh, the thing, <laughs> the action steps you take make you get there. So what is your goal for 2023? Well, I mean, we're two months in, um, almost two months in. What, what's your goal? What do you want to achieve this year? So it's funny that you say it because that's exactly what we were talking about in those photos that you that you uh and you have permission to share those if you like. But um essentially uh one of the biggest goals for me, uh we want to clear roughly about five hundred thousand in sales revenue. Here we go. Right. I can't sh need to need to unblur it's, my it's blurred out. <laughs> unblur my, my thing here. So these are the, mm -hmm. the photos, huh? Yeah, you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting everything exactly. in writing here in the office. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we want to do we want to do five hundred k in sales revenue, and I was being conservative when I said that because, in theory, uh, in reality, we may end up doing three times that. The reason I say that is because the agency that I work with now um, within LA. They're they're blown away by what we've produced so far. 
Nice. And I know what, like I, I told you guys what their budget is. And so I know we're probably being, I'm trying to extract as much of that as we can. Of course. Right. <laughs> but additionally, um, just from a health and personal standpoint, I really want to, I need to drop about 80 pounds. Right. And so that's like a, a, a big thing for me this year. And I know how to do it. I've done it before. I went from 240 down to 174. Yep. Right. But right now I need to, I need to take my personal health back. And so, uh, but you have to have time to be able to do that. <laughs> you know, you got to take um, the time. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, now, now I have that time and I'm taking it. I'm being very intentional with it. And then the third thing I would say is um, owning my first property here in Los Angeles, which is going to be a multifamily. I'm looking at um, some duplexes, some triplexes and some quadplexes. So nice. um, my goal is with doing that is to create not only passive income, Outside of just, you know, video production, but also being able to retire my mother and move wow. her beautiful from Memphis all the way out here. So because like all of her family is all out here. So, you know, I, I want her to be around her brothers and sisters and things of that nature. So those are like the top goals for me. The top beautiful. Four goals for me. Beautiful. I love to hear it. That's that's really nice. And I'm, I'm 100% sure you're going to hit them. No doubt. Easy. Um Cool, amazing. So let's say let's get back to the skeptics. You told them why why it's not a why it's not a scam, why you're not a paid actor, etc. Um, let's say they want to look you up, want to see where some of your work as well. Where can people find you online? Okay, yeah, you can visit scottsquaredmedia.com, which is going to be S C O T T squared, which is spelled S Q U A R E D media.com. Um, that has a you know, all of our contact information it has all of our, uh, our uh, like it's, I, I can't say all, but a lot of our portfolio. Um, additionally, you can reach out to us on social media too. So there's at Scott Squared Media on Instagram. You can also I'll link that down me. below as well. Yeah, you can also find me personally if you want to reach out to me. Just like, hey, hey, bro, are you, you scamming us? Like, yeah. <laughs> You can reach out to me personally. Uh, my uh, my Instagram is T H E, you know, the word the um, dot playerpreneur, which is spelled P L A Y A P R E N E U R. So the dot playerpreneur. And it's linked in the description. Mm hmm. Easier. <laughs> 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 nice. Amazing. So. To the to the videographer, cinematographer, producer world, um, to end this interview, like what do you wanna what do you wanna uh, leave them with? Like, is there a message that you wanna give to videographers around the world? Absolutely, man. Like, first and foremost, um, you're not a videographer, bro. That is a that is a painfully reductive way to. To, to describe yourself what we do is pretty magical right and if you're in control of a project um, if you're not being hired on as a uh, paid help you in fact sir are a, or, or ma'am you are a producer and so being able to number one contextualize what that means mentally um it put it places you in a position of power you have to see yourself as that first right um, and from there, the magic happens. I would definitely say that out of all of the things that I've invested in, and I, I wish I would have found this program earlier, right? And when, you know, I was going through my intake process with uh, Tiago, <laughs> Tiago <laughs> called me on some shit and I was like, I, I kind of took it personally as a challenge. Like mm. I'm, I'm very ambitious as as it is, but like, you know, I was trying. I was going, you know, full transparency. I was going through a three off three three month layoff period, um, and so my money was extremely funny, bro. I mean, I had a little bit of a credit line, um, and I maxed out my cards using this program. 
But uh, guess what I did when I got this project? Guess, guess what I did when I got this project? Number one, I paid myself seventeen thousand dollars. Number two, I paid. I cleared eight k of credit card debt, and so my my score jumped like almost a hundred points. And so, I just want to say that in saying, bro, like you can do this. You just have to make an active decision, and you know that what you know what you're missing. You know what you're missing, but you have to think of yourself a specific way first, and then you have to take a risk. Take that risk, bro. You're not going to regret it. Beautiful. Amazing. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, it's a super inspirational story. I love the goals that you, that you talked about. I uh, love your story, and I can't wait to see you hit these goals and uh, retire your mom and get that duplex, tri triplex, quadruplex, whatever it's going to be. And uh, obviously the house in Manhattan Beach. <laughs> so thank you for <laughs> yeah. taking the time. Thank you for inspiring videographers around the world. And uh, keep on crushing it, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got inspired by Mike's story. And if you want to achieve the same, if you want to get the same results like him, then I would highly suggest you now watch this free video training that is linked around me. You click that video. It's all about how the Video Business Academy works filmmakers and videographers around the world to improve their video business, attract premium clients, and obviously make more money. It's a free video. Go watch that right now and we'll see each other there.